Hey Girls Sports Extra, I'm your host Ali Gohar. Tonight we're going to focus on Taekwondo. We've got a bit of a Taekwondo uh, special here. We're going to speak to people who are involved in Taekwondo, including athletes and some uh, and uh, some uh, associates as well. So we're going to discuss that in great detail. We've got a, a, about five guests on this show, but we're going to speak to them gradually. Uh, first, we have Ms. Naksh. Hamdani and Ms. Aisha Noor. They'll be joining us uh, first up. Girls, great to have you on. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Well, we're going to have a detailed discussion with both of them, but before we do, our PTV World production team has prepared a special report, an overview of their careers. Let's listen in. Naksh Hamdani is a Pakistani Taekwondo athlete. Along with Taekwondo, Naksh is pursuing her doctorate degree in pharmacy. Naksh has represented Pakistan in various international Taekwondo events, including 8th Fujairah Open Taekwondo Championship in 2020, 13 South Asian Games 2019 in Nepal, 2019 Al Hassan Cup G1 in Jordan, the July 2019 World Taekwondo Championship, 7th Fujairah Open Taekwondo Championship. She has also participated in Junior Olympic Qualification Round 2018 and Tunisia World Taekwondo Junior Championship in 2018. Naksh has proven herself not only in international events but also in national and provincial events like various Korean Ambassador National Championships, National Taekwondo Championship 2015, Kickboxing Championship 2015, Sin Games Taekwondo 2012 and Sin Games Netball in 2012. Naksh has two international medals to her name. She won a bronze medal at 13 SAF Games in Nepal in 2019. She also won a silver medal at Al Hassan Cup G1 in Jordan in July 2019. Naksh has a total of 11 national gold medals to her name and she looks forward to further represent Pakistan across the world. Her other sports achievements include Black Belt Taekwondo from Kukliwon World Taekwondo Headquarters in Korea and she was selected by Pakistan Taekwondo Federation to train at the Elite Taekwondo Academy in Korea in 2019. That was an overview of Nakshandami's uh, achievements. Now we'll move on to uh, Ms. Aisha Noor and, an over and, an and her overview and what she's achieved so far. Let's listen in. Aisha Noor is a Pakistani Taekwondo athlete. Prior to Taekwondo, she is pursuing her master's degree in business administration. Aisha Noor has represented Pakistan in a number of international Taekwondo events including the US Open Taekwondo Championship 2019, World Taekwondo Championship 2017, the US Open Taekwondo Championship in 2017, Fourth Islamic Games 2017 held at Baku and 22nd Asian Taekwondo Championship in Philippines. Coming towards her participation in national events, Aisha has participated in the 13th Korean Ambassador National Taekwondo Championship which was held in Islamabad in 2019 and the 8th Korean Ambassador 2012 which was also held in the same place. She has also participated at 7th Korean Ambassador Championship in 2010. Aisha won a bronze medal at the 13th SAF Games in Nepal and she also won a bronze medal at the 12th SAF Games which were held in India in 2016. Aisha won three consecutive gold medals in National Taekwondo Championships in the year 2014, 2015 and 2016. She has four silver medals to her name in national and provincial Taekwondo events. Aisha was represented with the prestigious award of Best Emerging Taekwondo Player Sin in 2015. Well, they've already, they've already achieved so much at such a young age, and there's no doubt they're going to achieve a lot more. I'm delighted to have uh, both of them online with us, Naksh Hamdani and uh, Aisha Noor. Girls, like I said, great to have you on the show. We've seen an overview of what you've uh, achieved. It's been fantastic. Uh, I'll, I'll start with uh, Naksh Hamdani first. Naksh, what drew you towards Taekwondo? That's what I'd like to know first. Uh, what? I would like to know what drew you towards uh, Taekwondo. Why did you decide to take it up? Uh, it was a plan of my father that he wanted uh, the exam that what I am today. He wanted me and my sister to be in Taekwondo, to be in martial arts, to learn self-defense, to be as confident as we are today. So because of him, I am today now. Aisha Noor, what about you? What's your story? Why did you decide to take up Taekwondo? Yeah, actually my father, he was into sports like football and cricket, so he wanted that, I actually I am the only child, 
so uh, all his dreams and all his desires were were for me so he wanted me to you know uh, to play some sport so he took me to sin the sports board from where i have started my taekwondo actually so uh, over there uh, the person the management they suggested him that uh, she can do taekwondo at that time i didn't had i didn't had any you know uh, any interest in taekwondo but with time when i participated in events and when i event and when i won medals my interest in taekwondo it grew stronger and stronger day by day you know it's great that both of you said that your father your father's encouraged you and i think that's very very positive because as we know uh, many girls have uh, have struggled to get into sports because uh, because of their families but thing is it's good to know that things are changing and that your parents and your father especially encourage you to uh, pursue your dreams uh, not coming back to you at, at what point did you realize that you could be really really good i mean it's one thing when you start you know your frame of mind is a little bit different but at what point in your career did you think that you could you could be great and t- then you decided to take it seriously of course um uh, when i started taekwondo i was just 10 years old like i was too young so uh, after this uh, i started taekwondo at 2011 and at 2012 i won gold medal at the national games so it was a really big achievement i played from i performed from the sin province so it was a very big achievement for me as well as for sin province uh, that to achieve a gold medal in the national after that uh, so my desire of becoming uh, the best taekwondo player is uh, become like uh, i worked hard and harder for it so at that time uh, i decided that i will do the best i can and my family supports me the best they can do uh, i i saw what about you when did you start to feel a uh, command when you were on the mat i mean we've just had a look at both your careers you both done very very well but aisha when when did it click for you when did the penny drop when you knew that yeah you yeah, can do I, wonderful things yeah. in taekwondo yeah, i started my um, national uh, championships career in 2009 but when i played my first national game um i won silver medal in it and um, um, that was and that was the time when i realized that yeah i can do something in this game because uh, because i competed in the final against pakistan army and the player she was you know on the top at that time and my final it was uh, everyone just supported me and everyone knew appreciated me for what i performed so that was the point where i realized that um, yeah i can do something in this game We'll get to your national achievements, but I'd like to know uh, how you felt when you uh, traveled abroad and you were up against uh, international taekwondo athletes. You girls, uh, you went to Nepal, India, Jordan. So tell us about your first experience. I'll start with Naksh, uh, competing abroad. Uh, my international career started when I was uh, still too young. I was junior. Uh, at 2016, I went to the... Uh, Uh, I went to the India for South Games, South Games 2016, and uh, I played really well. I was a junior at that time, and I was playing in a senior championship. Uh, after that, uh, I am with Federation since six years. Six years. Uh, so after that, I continue my career internationally, and I started working hard and harder for the international level. Uh, before that, I was just competing nationally, but. after competing international first time that was my desire it it becomes like my life that i had to achieve for the uh, pakistan then i continue and then i perform in a youth olympic qualification round and then i become senior then i uh, went to the korea camp then i went to the world championship i was the only girl who was selected and sent to the world championship at manchester uk it was a really big event and after that i got from that championship i got a really big experience and i realized that i can i can also do that why why i cannot do after that i went to the jordan and i won silver medal that was my biggest achievement ever that was like man you stand on the uh, victory stand and your flag is uh, moving upwards <coughs> with, along with other flags it is a movement or we can describe no one can describe 
So that is my achievement internationally. Well, there's no doubt it's an indescribable feeling once you uh, achieve your goal. Uh, Aisha, uh, Aisha, what about you? When you first, uh, w when you went abroad and you were up against uh, international international competitors, were you uh, overawed by the situation, or was it just like was it just another day for you? Uh, yeah, me and Nash, we both had our international debut together. <coughs> first, we both participated yeah, in the 12 South Asian Games in India. And I won my first international ma medal in that event that was bronze medal. Yeah, it, uh, we, we were used to, used to you know, uh, have fights over here. We were playing nationally. But when you go internet, when, but when you go on an international stage, you have to face international athletes. So yeah, there is, uh, you know, some, you, you, you have some, you know, butterflies in your stomach. So you want to know how are you going to perform over here. You are the hero of your country. But uh, then everyone is expecting you to perform, you know, very well um, internationally too. So yeah, it was very, it was a very different experience, a very amazing experience. And then, I'm sorry. And then the next event I had after the South Asian Games, it was um, Asian um, Asian Championships that were held with the Asian Qualification Tournament. So it was a very big event because. Um, you know, there were Olympic level athletes participating. So it was a very great, uh, great experience for me. And yeah, I have learned a lot from uh, from my initial uh, experiences. I'd like to put training. this. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to put this uh, uh, both to you. I'll start with uh, I'll start with Naksh. What are some of the biggest challenges you've had to face uh, in your uh, in your career so far? What are the biggest hurdles that you've had to overcome? And the biggest hurdle was to like start to start the taekwondo to uh, introduce my game to them because in my family um, very selective persons are in taekwondo and no one is in the martial arts. So the to uh, so the basic basic hurdle was to introduce my game and myself to my family. Um, it's, at starting, they were like, "What she is doing? She's a girl." And but after the achievements. What I got, what I'm becoming, what I'm today, they appreciate me and my family was always supporting me, so I don't think so, otherwise I got any hurdle. I just have to work hard, so I don't get any hurdle. Aisha, what about you? Describe some of the challenges you've had to overcome. The biggest challenge that I have faced was in the initial phase of my career, I would say that my career haven't even started and I faced that challenge. It was when I played my first national game. Just after after coming back from that, a week later, I had a serious ligament injury in my knee. And the doctor told me that you cannot play taekwondo anymore. And um, uh, and I was very disheartened because, I, as I told you, um, I was very, you know, intimate, in, intimidated that, yeah, I can do something. And just coming back from an event and you get an injury, but my father is the one who supported me and he took me to various doctors and I don't know where I, I went for physical, you know, physiotherapies and all. And he didn't give up. I think at some, at, at some point, even I gave up that, yeah, I cannot do now. I cannot play Taekwondo now. But he was the one who didn't give up. And here I am still playing Taekwondo. Yeah, we got uh, final a lot of question. <laughs> Final question, girls, as I said before, you've got, uh, th there's a lot more you have to achieve. You've already done so well, but what are your, what are your goals going forward? Some short-term goals, uh, short-term goals. Naksh? Um, uh, mm, in future, we are having a G1 event, uh, which was postponed because of this pandemic uh, time, because of this COVID-19, so it is postponed. Uh, otherwise, we we will, inshallah, we will have the G1 event in Pakistan, uh, for which we are working so hard. Our federation, especially our president, Colonel Rakeem, who supports us a lot. Um, I really want to discuss about him that he is the one um, uh, taking the taekwondo level to the much higher. Like, mm. he is the one who are supporting us. We are not like uh, what we are achieving. This is not just our success. Like, 
एज आर बैग देज आर कोचेज आर पाकिस्तान कोचेज स्पेशल फीमेल कोच वी हैव नाजिया खान एंड अदर कोचेज टू दे आर सपोर्टिंग अर्स सो वेल लाइक एंड एंड ऑल्सो वी हैव इंटरनेशनल कोचेज इंटरनेशनल कोचेज रिसेंटली वी हैव कोरियन कोच एट इस्लामाबाद सो they are working for us because of them we are playing and we are achieving so uh, the g1 event is going to happen inshallah uh, after this pandemic time so i re- i really like to like uh, at nepal uh, after the safe game to run 19 we on- only get the camp of one week so that was not enough and still we bring so much medals we got uh, we bring the gold medals bronze medals silver medals so i really request to the Uh, respected minister of minister of sports samida mirza and our prime minister uh, imran khan that they should give us our federation the equal rights as they are giving to the other highlighted games like cricket football and sports as they have their own resources their own uh, place of uh, doing training we don't have any personal training uh, areas so we can conduct the camps so i really like that they should also focus on our game and other martial arts so we can <clears throat> so we can conduct the we can attend the camp of 6 months at least we should have the camp of 6 uh, months um camp right. for the event so mm. i really like to request to them well th- that's fantastic girls i'm glad i mean we're all glad that you've achieved so much and i think the most i mean for me at least the most important part out of this discussion was that you were encouraged by uh, your families it's becoming mainstream now for girls to become uh, top competitive international athletes and i have no doubt that both of you will go much much further you're doing fantastic work keep it up and continue to make uh, pakistan proud thank you very much for speaking to us thank you thank thank you that was Nuk Hamdani and Aisha Noor two fantastic uh, taekwondo athletes we'll be back after a short break when we come back we'll be speaking to a couple of more competitors stay tuned Welcome back. We're focusing on Taekwondo tonight and we'll be speaking to a couple of more competitors. We've been joined online by Asifa Ali and Taimur Said. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be on here. Right, we'll talk to uh, Taimur and Asifa in detail of course, but before we do that, our PTV World production team has uh, prepared an overview of their achievements. Let's listen in. Temur Said is a Pakistani taekwondo athlete and he has completed his A levels from Karachi. Temur participated as member of Pakistan Taekwondo National Team at 8th Fujairah Open Taekwondo Championship in United Arab Emirates. He participated as member of Pakistan Taekwondo Junior National Team at 2019 Al Hasan Cup which was held in Jordan. He has competed at 10th Asian Junior Championship Amman, 7th Fujairah Open Taekwondo Championship and Asian Junior Championship Kazakhstan in 2017. Temur won a silver medal at 7th Fujairah Open Taekwondo. He won a bronze medal at 2019 Al Hasan Cup which was held in Jordan in July 2019. Temur won a gold medal at the 13th Korean Ambassador National Championship Islamabad and a silver medal at 12th Korean Ambassador National Taekwondo Championship. Temur has one gold, two silver and one bronze medal to his name and he is also a black belt in Taekwondo. Temur holds the distinction of being selected by Pakistan Taekwondo Federation to train at the Elite Taekwondo One Academy in Muju, Korea in 
That was Tamur Said. Now it's time to listen in to Asifa Ali's career and what she's achieved. Asifa Ali is a Pakistani Taekwondo athlete. Along with Taekwondo, Asifa has completed her master's degree in business administration. Asifa has participated in several international events including 13 South Asian Games 2019 in Nepal, the December 2019 Third Asian President Cup G2, 2019 Fajr Open Championship in Iran, the 29th Al Fajr Taekwondo Championship and 29th World Universiate Games at Taiwan. Her national events include 33rd National Games in Peshawar 2019, Korean Ambassador National Championship 2017 and 2018, and the first South Korean Cup 2016. She has also participated in all Pakistan Inter Varsity Karate Championship 2016 under the various Taekwondo events. Asifa won two bronze medals at 13 staff games, which were held in Nepal in 2019. She won four gold medals at South Korean Cup 2016 and three silver medals at 12th Korean Ambassador National Taekwondo Championship in Islamabad. She also won a gold medal at All Pakistan Women's Martial Arts Wushu Championship. Asifa has a total of six gold, nine silver and five bronze medals to her name in national events. She has won four provincial gold medals. Prior to Taekwondo, Asifa is a black belt in Taekwondo and a black belt in Karate. Time now to get into detail with these two wonderful athletes. Uh, Temur, I'll start with you, and then I'll ask Asifa the, uh, the same question. Taekwondo, what does it mean to you? What's so special about this game? Uh, well, um, Taekwondo is something that I've been doing since I was very young. Uh, it's a sport that I uh, started doing, and it, at first I didn't enjoy doing it because it was so tough, but uh, as I progressed and eventually got to my black belt, I learned that throughout this um, journey of Taekwondo that I've been through, it's taught me so much about how, what my limits are, how far I can go, how much, what hard work really means. So it really does mean a lot to me in the sense that it's taught me hard work, perseverance, and um, you know, um, uh, how to, you know, what my limits really are. So it's taught me a lot in that sense. And of, of course, I, I enjoy doing the sport itself a lot. That's why I've been um, pursuing it for so long. Um, so yeah, that's what it really means to me. Asifa, what about you? Why is this discipline so special? Uh, taekwondo is lifestyle for me. It's very important wherever I go in uh, university or school, wherever I went through Taekwondo was with me. I always dream Taekwondo when I was young. I dream to represent my uh, college, then university, then I uh, dream to represent my department, then I dream to represent Pakistan. And always I had dream to bring gold medal for Pakistan, which is, you know, uh, uh, which is a part of my progress, which is my uh, strength, which is always my dream to keep, uh, keep in the game. Uh, Tamur, you, you talked about your, your progression. So at what stage did you realize that this is something you can take up and end up doing very well in? You said earlier that oh, when you first started it was very difficult and you, and you weren't sure uh, how good you could be. But that obviously changed at some point in your life. Uh, so I think the turning point for me was when I um, got my first national medal. Uh, because um, at that point I realized that you know this is something that I could potentially um, do professionally, maybe make a career out of it at some point. Because um, then I realized the the concept of how hard work really pays off. Because I didn't before that I wasn't too serious about the sport. I didn't realize um, uh, you know how what my my regimen should be, my training hours. So after my first national medal, I learned. Um, how a professional athlete really manages their schedule, how they train, what the, what their diet should be. So that was really my turning point after that. And I, and I, I realized my potential uh, in myself. My coaches had always told me that I have a serious potential, but I think after that I learned myself that I really did have um, a lot of potential. And so after that was uh, I developed more drive and more more sort of motivation to uh, compete as much as I can in this sport because it doesn't, you don't have a very big career uh, in terms of age, speaking age-wise in Taekwondo, it's maybe 10 to 15 years, so I have to make the most of what I, of all the time that I have. Asfa, what's your story? Why did you get into Taekwondo 
And at what point did you realize I can be very, very good at this? Uh, I was uh, uh, very passionate from the start. But learning is hard, learning is difficult, and Taekwondo is very difficult sport. So uh, many time I, I uh, many time I think that I can't do it. So the thing which is uh, keeping me in this game is my teacher, my uh, coaches, my uh, colleagues, my uh, teammates. Always they uh, they are you know they encourage me. They are saying me that you have potential. You can do it. You can do it. So the thing is uh, when you have good teammates, when you have star teammates, they have represented Pakistan many times, they bring medals for Pakistan. So this is the motivation, you want to be like them, you want to represent Pakistan like them, you want to bring medals like them. So the motivation comes from team, comes from coaches and uh, of course comes from family. No, absolutely. I mean, you have to have a. We spoke to a couple of uh, girls uh, earlier, Hamdani and uh, uh, Aisha Noor, and they have that same. Clearly, I mean, you all share that same burning desire to excel. And uh, talking about excelling, uh, Temu, you're obviously uh, doing very, very well. You were asked to train in uh, Muju in 2019 in uh, Korea, so there's no doubt uh, you have a tremendous talent. But I, I, and you already touched upon this, but I'd like to expound. Uh, how much hard work goes into it? Because talent, as you alluded to earlier, can only take you so far. And you've already achieved a lot at such a young age. But I'd like you to describe your, uh, your workout regimen, your training regime, to have, to have gotten to this level. Uh, so, like, yes, as you mentioned, talent can only take you so far. Hard work is really what differentiates people from people who have uh, have talent and people who have worked worked excessively hard to get where they are so um training regime really will it differs from time to time uh, right uh, as uh, when we come closer to competitions we usually have a training camp so in that training camp training can be training is split up into two and three sessions in the day so uh, you would have a training camp for maybe one or two months and in that you can have training session training in the day which can last up to almost six hours at a time because it's split into three sessions a day. So uh, training is very, very tough, it's very tiresome and obviously not everyone uh, trains six hours um, uh, every day for the, for the entire year, it's done throughout camps but, uh, but on a regular basis training I would say is definitely at least two to three hours for a Taekwondo athlete on a regular basis uh, sort of schedule. So uh, training is uh, supposed to be tough because Taekwondo is a very intense sport just like other martial arts sports. It's, it's even it's more focused um, on your uh, flexibility, on your endurance and these thing, things take a lot of time to develop. They don't just happen in one day, especially flexibility and your endurance. It takes a lot of time to build up. So you have to consistently work hard throughout the day. Your diet and rest should also be very uh, on point. It should be, it's very key. So uh, that's the training regime that pretty much I follow, I think all the Taekwondo athletes here as well, they also follow that. We only have a few minutes remaining guys, so I'd like to hear uh, a story. Now you've, comp you've already uh, competed a lot, I'm sure you've had some tough matches. Uh, Asifa, I, I, I want to know about one of your games where, uh, one of the most memorable ones where perhaps you were doing very well, then you uh, then you came back strongly and, and you won the day against all odds. You know, a moment that, uh, yeah. you know, got the blood pumping, the adrenaline, adrenaline rush going and that inspired you to, to move forward. Yes. Uh, I would like to tell you the story where I won the first medal for Pakistan. Uh, in the recent, I'd never won any medals for Pakistan, but in that game, I won, a, a, I won two bronze medals for Pakistan. That day, uh, that uh, month, I should say, that year, all uh, was a part of my training. Taekwondo is a very tough game, as uh, Tamur said. But uh, when we were training, we didn't had a camp. We were like, uh, we, uh, we, we competed in uh, 33 national games, and then uh, we got camp for like one, one and a half weeks. So the camp was very tough. We realized that we are going to compete in a very big event. And then when I joined that event in Nepal, Kathmandu, so the coaches uh, and everyone was very stressful. They, uh, 
they know that we need we need very much time for that we were needed but uh, unfortunately we couldn't had a camp but uh, when i was in the ring when i was going uh, when i was going to participate when i was going to perform the colonel uh, uh, present of taekwondo colonel the team has said that you don't take uh, you don't need to take any pressure you are just going just do whatever you can do with the full potential you know you have everything in it you uh, you have trained we have coaches you have everything don't uh, like don't think that they are uh, like good to you uh, they are like superior they are senior they have medals don't think anything but when i competed that was the first time i never felt any pressure in the ring i never felt any kind of any sort of like uh, uh, any sort of like uh, inferiority any sort of like uh, i am coming from the country where we don't have many camps uh, we couldn't have many uh, tours but when i was performing i did with all my heart and i won medals that was my memorable story the day was remembering okay. Guys, it was wonderful talking to you. You're both uh, incredibly talented and incredibly intelligent. And as I said to the other girls uh, earlier, Hamdani and uh, Aisha Noor, you're, you're going to go very, very far. Stay focused and keep working. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for joining. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. We're going to take another quick ba break. When we come back, we'll have a little bit more from the world of Taekwondo. Welcome back. We've now been joined by a key official uh, in the world of Taekwondo, in South Asia specifically, of course. We have the president of the South Asian Taekwondo Federation, Mr. Omar Said. Omar Said, great to have you on. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Omar Said, tell us, what's the state of Taekwondo like uh, right now in uh, South Asia? And uh, at this stage, obviously, Corona has, has hit the world, so... Uh, your goals and you know, what you wanted to achieve may be on pause. But just describe, a little, describe the situation uh, for us. Well, at the moment, uh, like you said, everything is on hold. But um, uh, as far as South Asia is concerned uh, and as Pakistan compared to South Asia, we are not very far behind, actually. We are very much on the same level, you know. Considering that, uh, you know, we have to compete against countries like Nepal and uh, India and Sri Lanka. Uh, Nepal has, a, has a, uh, pumped in a lot of resources into Taekwondo. You know, they got an excellent training facility. Uh, you know, it's a dedicated Taekwondo training facility. Uh, they've uh, put in a lot of money to Taekwondo. And uh, considering all that, you know, um, we're pretty much at par with Southeast, uh, South Asia. I mean, it's great to see that South Asian games. Yeah, so our performance at the South Asian games have proved that you know we're very, very much at par with everybody. You know, as, as far as this region is concerned. Look, the results are there. There's no, uh, there's no doubt about it. We've yeah. been speaking to some uh, top, uh, top athletes. We were speaking to them earlier, and not only are they talented, they're, they're extremely determined. So I, I, I'd like to go back on what, what you touched on. Uh, you said Nepal is pumping uh, a lot of money and they have a lot of resources. What, where's, where's Pakistan at right now? 
with uh, uh, with regard to uh, money, resources, training, coaches. Because I hear that the situ- they tell me that the situation has gotten better. Yes, uh, actually, Pakistan is, uh, as far as Taekwondo is concerned, it's very well organized because we've got Taekwondo in the school system. We've got uh, clubs all over Pakistan. Every city, every district has clubs, and the clubs and the city. Then we've got provincial Taekwondo, and then we've got the national Taekwondo. So, as far as organization of Taekwondo is concerned, we are the uh, we are, you know, we are doing all right. Uh, as far as resources are concerned, yes, there is lack of resources, uh, you know, um, because we look towards the, the government and we look towards the sports authorities uh, to provide us the resources, uh, you know, and uh, that's where we lack uh, to a large extent. Uh, but I suppose uh, the government is also, does, the government also has limited resources, you know, which they have to distribute amongst all other sports. Uh, but uh, considering all that, uh, I mean, um, last one year, I think, uh, you know, in the previous interview with the president, he must have explained that uh, considering lack of resources and, uh, uh, you know, uh, lack, lack of resources uh, in terms of funding, lack of resources in terms of training facilities, lack of resources in terms of uh, coaches and uh, training officials, uh, we've still managed to compete in about, I think more than 17 or I think about 19 uh, international tournaments uh, during the last one year, including the World Championships and the SAP Games. Uh, and we uh, we have uh, now, you know, we have a good coaching team. We have a coaching staff, a dedicated coaching staff for the national team. We have a uh, we have a, a Korean coach, you know, who's been with us for the last uh, nearly one year now. Uh, and uh, all this is being managed. Uh, Partly through somewhat government funding, but majority of it through sponsors and uh, local donors, you know. Uh, and I think uh, if we compare it to other sports in Pakistan, um, apart from cricket, I think uh, Taekwondo today is maybe the second most popular sport. And uh, I think uh, compared to other sports, I think our teams have participated in the most international tournaments. It's it's interesting hearing you talk about this because we often discuss the struggles that athletes face, but what officials have to go through, and you being the president like yourself, there are a number of deep-rooted internal internal challenges you have to face, and Taekwondo is no exception. But as you said, Taekwondo is is doing rather well because you've been able to improvise within within the framework yes of course you have to continue to yes. engage the private sector and uh, uh, other uh, other institutions to uh, to continue progressing but i guess pakistani taekwondo right now is is a small story of how people like you and your team have managed to work well within this narrow framework and produce results Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm relatively new to the uh, to the uh, to the federation. I've only been associated with the federation for the last uh, two or three years. But uh, Kal Wasim, uh, he's the president of the federation, and uh, he. I think all credit should go to him because he's been working uh, on this for the last uh, I don't know, good seven eight years, ten years. You know, developing taekwondo in Pakistan, developing taekwondo at club level at. Um, provincial level, at the national level, he's been, uh, you know, every year we have uh, the national championships, which is, a, which is a mega event, you know, for, uh, for all the national athletes, for all the athletes of Pakistan, you know, and uh, so, um, you know, a lot of credit goes to his perseverance and his dedication to the sport, and uh, you see, at the end of the day, the, the vision of, of the president of the federation, my vision, uh, and the coaches, uh, is that we must create opportunities for our children, for the young athletes, you know. Uh, this is the future, you know. We, we, we are trying to create opportunities for them, uh, give them opportunities to excel, you know, uh, to, uh, to go and compete internationally, to compete nationally, you know. And uh, this, is, this is what it's all about, really. Uh, trying to create opportunities for the, you know, for, for the for the youngsters, 
uh, giving them opportunities to excel and to sh to show the world, you know, and to show their country, you know, uh, what what they can achieve. And this is what it's really about. Final question, uh, Umar, Umar Said Saab, like we uh, highlighted before, everything is on hold right now. So this might be a difficult question to answer, but in your mind, what are, what are some short-term goals uh, you've set for a Pakistani Taekwondo? Final thought. Well, the uh, short-term goal is that uh, at, the, at the moment we are trying to uh, develop uh, the National Taekwondo Academy. Uh, things are in, in progress because the Prime Minister has announced a uh, uh, private-public partnership program. And under that, uh, what the President of the Federation is trying to do is he's trying to, uh, you know, get the government involved. And uh, we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, develop a Taekwondo, National Taekwondo Academy in Pakistan, in Islamabad, hopefully, uh, where we can uh, give the opportunity, you know, to all our national athletes, to our Taekwondo athletes, to come and train in an elite academy with the best coaches and the best facilities uh, that we can offer, you know, and uh, I mean, uh, hopefully this should uh, uh, this should materialize in the next couple of months, you know, and uh, if that happens, then I think 2021 would be a would be an excellent year uh, for athletes uh, to train and to perform and to show what they're really worth. Omar Said, President of the South Asian Taekwondo Federation, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much. Pleasure. That's all we have time for. Keep watching Sports Extra on PTV World. See you next time. Bye-bye.